Hi, Kayvon. So obviously you signed during a time when workouts weren't allowed. Did, did you talk to Chris Greer, Brian Flores, or Gerald Alexander before you signed, before David Tanner did a deal for you? And if so, what did they tell you? Uh, no, no, I didn't. I, I didn't speak to, you know, anybody before that came. Um, yeah, I mean, it was a time that, you know, we couldn't do any workouts. Obviously, last year I was hurt. I was coming off a, a pec injury. So, um, you know, it was just an unfortunate time for me because, um, you know, I needed to be seen by teams in order to to get um, to have them trust that I that I was 100 percent healthy. Um, you know, even though, you know, that was week four of the season last year, you know, teams still wanted to to see how I was feeling and see if I was 100 percent. Um, so, you know, I was just fortunate to have them actually believe that, you know, believe that what we, what we were saying and, you know, believe my agent that, you know, I was hundred percent and not, and ultimately believe in me and believe in my, uh, talent and what I could do on the field. Omar. Hey, Ma, I want to ask you, cause you're, you're pretty much a strong safety. What's the biggest key to mastering those run fits when you got to help out in the run? Yeah. Um, you know, run fits to me, uh, that's one of my strong suits. Um, you know, it just kind of come natural to me. Um, and Dallas, you know, I don't want to speak too much about this, about, uh, my time in Dallas, but during my time in Dallas, I was, you know, I was doing the same thing. I was down in the box a lot, uh, you know, filling the holes and filling the gaps. So, you know, this defense is just, it's, it's just coming natural to me. Travis. Hey, Kayvon, kind of on that same tone there, uh, you played a lot of special teams there with Dallas, and now you come here to compete for work in the defensive backfield. How important is it to you to have a chance to really earn reps on defense? And what's been your impression so far of the defensive back room through the first couple of weeks of training camp? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's definitely important. Um, like I said, I, I really don't want to go too much in my time at Dallas because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at a new chapter now, you know, uh, and I'm just grateful to be here. But um, I didn't really get the opportunity that I wanted there. So here um, it's definitely important to me to, to try to get on the field at def on defense. But with that being said, I'm willing to do whatever they want me to do. Um, you know, I realize – uh, you know, I'm in my fifth year and, you know, we have a lot of other people also. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of competition going on. Um, and, you know, I'm sure I'm just doing whatever they want me to do. If they want me to play strictly punt and just coverage units, I'm cool with that. If they need me in on defense, you know, I'm going to be ready for my opportunity when it comes. Cam? Hey, Kayvon, what's up, man? Uh, I what's know up? you've been sort of active in the protest movement, you know, throughout the off season. I just kind of wanted to get your kind of view on where we currently are and, and what you feel like your role is in, in bringing attention to social injustice. Yeah, um, this is, you know, this is a tough topic for me because, um, you know, I had an incident when I was, I had an incident when I was younger and I was uh, racially profiled when I was 10 years old. And, and, you know, police thought I had a gun on me, but, you know, I was just a 10 year old innocent kid who went to Christian school all their life, was doing all the right things. So at that moment there, you know, I know, I knew, um, you know, I knew anybody could be targeted, you know, just by the color of our skin. Um, so that's why, you know, I'm so um, active in the community. I'm so uh, active in, um, in trying to educate other people, you know, about what's going on, about like how the, the, about how America really is um, for us. Um, but where he is right now, man, I'm, I'm really lost. Like, I'm lost for words. I'm lost for hope. You know, I really don't understand how after people watch what happened to George Floyd um, and after they, they watched that eight or nine minute clip, um, how this last incident could have happened. You know, I, I just don't understand how um, how somebody could, somebody who's unarmed, family in the car, um, how he can, you know, be a threat. I, I just don't understand. Um, 
and I mean, we're lost. I mean, we're, we're scared. I'm scared. You know, I, I drive a pretty nice car and I'm scared if I get pulled over that, you know, that could happen to me. I'm scared for my, you know, I got two daughters at home. You know, obviously this happened to a lot with males, but, you know, my daughters, they still look like me. Like they still have some darkness to their skin. So, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just scared, man. I'm like me as a male in America right now, you know, I'm really, really scared. Like, I don't, I just don't, I just don't understand. I don't, I don't know, you know, you know, cause that could be me with well, my daughter's in the car and, and, you know, they just unload seven shots on me. Um, and I'm, I just don't, I'm just lost, man. I'm lost. Omar? I want to ask you, in Dallas, you guys didn't necessarily have the freedom to uh, kneel or, or, ish, or protest. Have you given some thought into what you'll be doing here? Well, like I said, I don't, I don't really want to speak on, you know, my time in Dallas. It's a new chapter. Um, but, you know, as far as the protest, uh, we're just going to uh, take that as it comes. Uh, it just, uh, you know, and just talk with the team about it, you know, and just as it come up, then we're going to attack it. But, you know, right, right now, man, we just, you know, there's other problems going on in the world. Obviously, um, you know, the NBA has been taking these. They've been wearing Black Lives Matter shirts and the same stuff still going on. Um, you, can, you know, obviously people don't get the message. Like, you know, there's people out there that still don't understand what us as black male and, and males in America really go through. Um, you know, we've been telling them this for a long time now. And, you know, and they just think we're lying. You know, they, they victimize us and they think that, that we're the problem. And that just because, you know, some of us, you know, may act a certain way or, or, or came up from, you know, a certain neighborhood that we're, you know, always, everybody's angry and everybody's uh, upset at the world. But really it's the other way around. And, you know, we just, we're in a loss, we're lost for hope right now. Like we just don't, we're scared.